Taiwan's agriculture sector is going through a severe labor shortage as youth from rural communities move away for work. This has put a strain on aging farmers who are already struggling with fickle growth conditions brought by climate change. Taiwan's government hopes that new technologies can help answer this problem. New technologies like big data can be used to decide when to fertilize, and smart systems can be used to water crops. The modernization of farming could also encourage more young adults to leave their desk jobs for a life of working the land. He casts a net into the water to check on his fish. This is a daily routine for Guo Guanbao, now nearly 70 years old. They say that when a fish's mucus is very thick, it's very healthy. This one here is good. Guo's fish farm is along the coast of Xingzhu's Zhubei Township, and his fish are raised in seawater. He has two types of fish, tilapia and gray mullet. Guo takes on each day as he always has. But as he gets on in years and loses his youthful energy, the work gets harder and harder. Around here, I'm one of the younger ones. There are plenty of fishers older than I am. They run into problems all the time. Some of them can't even carry the fish feed. Taiwan's agricultural industry has been hit hard by labor outflow. According to statistics from 2018, there are roughly 550,000 farmers nationwide. There is a shortage of 15,000 regular workers and 267,000 seasonal workers. But for Taiwan's agricultural industry, the labor shortage isn't necessarily a death knell. It's not quite six in the morning. In the mountains of Xingzhu's Guanxi Township, sunlight is seeping into this melon greenhouse. The air is filled with the fragrance of melons ripe for the picking. It's not hard to imagine the work devoted to bringing about this harvest. Xie Jingyuan is not from a farming family. He had started out with a strawberry field that, due to his inexperience, succumbed to an insect infestation. Because we farm organically, beetles are extremely, extremely difficult to keep away. Once they get into the greenhouse and start reproducing, you basically have no recourse. Only after becoming a farmer did Xie understand the hardships involved. His greatest challenge is the weather, which cannot be controlled. Xie believes that when it comes to production, marketing, finances, and the weather, farmers must adopt modern concepts. That's why he's tested out high-tech farming equipment on his operation. I have helped you install this here in the greenhouse. It'll help with watering and deciding whether to open the sunroof to adjust the humidity. This piece of technology collects data from the farm. Conditions across every inch of this tarp-covered soil, including changes in temperature and moisture levels, are measured by small sensors. All the information is digitized and presented in charts. It's very hot today. Tomorrow will be cloudy, and the following morning will be hot with thunder showers in the afternoon. How do I plan the watering of the plants so that I'm watering them enough and not overwatering them? This is actually a very subjective matter based on perception. But if we try to quantify it, we can at least have a standard for reference. Another farming operation that uses smart technology belongs to mushroom farmer Lu Jianxu at Taichung's Xingshe district. I do my best to not let the temperature go above 29 degrees Celsius. If it gets above 29 degrees, the mycelium inside the mushroom grow bag will stop growing. New mushroom grow bags are arranged in neat rows. Once mushrooms begin growing in the bags, they take roughly four months to reach full size. Less than two weeks in, one-tenth of this batch has already died. Although some of the mushrooms have died, Lu is unperturbed. He has begun using Internet of Things technology with sensors that test temperature and humidity in the mushroom hut, allowing him to monitor the mushroom's growing conditions. In the past, when we cultivated mushrooms in traditional mushroom huts, if we encountered hot weather, such as the hot weather we just had, we would lose 40 percent of the crop. Last year, I began bringing the mushroom bags into the greenhouse. I discovered that the loss rate never exceeded 10 percent. In its early days, Internet of Things technology was mainly used in manufacturing. As part of a project under the Industrial Development Bureau, the Internet of Things has been integrated with agriculture. 
Information about agricultural production can be sent to the cloud and analyzed using big data technology to create production models. In the past, farmers were from the older generation. They would look at the weather today and the year's rainfall and decide whether to do any irrigation or things like that. But if all those records and all that information could be recorded, the whole system of production and harvesting would benefit greatly. However, this type of technology is not cheap. And for young farmers just starting out, it's a massive investment. And for farmers who already have a lifetime of experience, such technology lacks appeal. Going by the experienced farmers in my life, it seems that they rely on their own judgment and experience. They might feel that over-reliance on automated systems results in indolence, and that if plants get watered automatically, they might get too lazy to check on them. The profit margin in fishing and agriculture is not that good, so thinking about costs is very important. But in the future, if this technology becomes commonplace, and if the technology matures, the cost of this investment will go down. Then, the common fisher or farmer could afford to use it. Smart technology can lighten the burden for farmers and fishers, and it can help entire industries overcome labor shortages. It may also encourage youth to return to the countryside and become farmers. If Taiwanese farming can break free from traditional strictures, it could turn a new page in its history.